Sing the symphony My heart beats when I could not sing a pee One G, play some keys to sing for me I get hooked to the chorus guaranteed uh, I'm a tempo tempo Music takes you to the place it came from Instrumentals in your mental echoes In your subconscious it sits and set those Catch Amazing Minds Mondays and Fridays, 22 hours Central African time on YouTube and Spotify for podcasters. Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. You're welcome to Bible Talks. Uh, Fridays are for Bible Talks. I hope you've brought your shouting clothes tonight. Haven't been here in a while, but we're back. Uh, it has been quite the difficult period for everyone in Zambia. We don't have power generally. It's not a rumor if you are outside Zambia and you're hearing that we only have three hours of power a day. It's true. There are countries in this uh, day and age that are experiencing that. Can you imagine? So we have to rely on alternative sources of power. And you know that doesn't come cheap. Neither does it come quickly. So we're so grateful to God to have the privilege of still being able to reach you in such a time like this. And I believe that if the Lord hadn't uh, loved you and desired for you to hear what you're about to hear today, then he wouldn't have sent me and put me in a position of ability to be able to reach you even in such difficult times now the show is available uh, of course on youtube every monday and friday mondays which is for the political segment of the show the monday show and bible talks uh, comes on fridays both 22 hours central african time on bible talks we discuss a lot of biblical subjects um, don't be fooled by the name bible talks it doesn't uh, mean we are discussing the bible from a traditional or religious perspective we are actually discussing the Bible from a very spiritual perspective. Uh, but the name Bible Talks is simply to be very relatable, to understand that we're not having spiritual discussions that are necessarily extra biblical, but it's very Christian based. We aim to uh, explain, teach, demonstrate, exemplify Jesus Christ through both our uh, Bible talk segment and Monday show, the political segment of the show uh, has a lot to do with, if you're a Christian, I believe you must be privy to the information that Jesus has a twofold assignment, one which is uh, rather spiritual, which has to do with the salvation of our souls, and the other is political. So when Jesus Christ comes, he's coming not as a religious leader, but as a political leader. It's important to note that Jesus Christ himself is not a Christian. He's not a follower of Christ. Uh, neither is God. A Christian, he is not a follower of Christ, but we are Christians, we're followers of Christ, and therefore we must uh, demonstrate Christ in a certain way and understand him in a certain way. So our perspective must not be limited uh, on the basis of 
our position in Christ because he himself does not bear the same position we bear within him. Um, therefore, we must understand that Christ does not only have a spiritual assignment for the earth, but a political assignment. He's coming back as a political leader, the political leader of the world. The Bible says uh, the end of, the, of his kingdom shall not exist because his kingdom shall reign over the earth in perpetuity. So Jesus Christ is coming back for a political assignment. Therefore, we believe as Christians, we must have some kind of a footing politically. And that's the essence of the Monday show, the political segment of the show. Bible Talks, however, is there to demonstrate spiritual information about Jesus Christ. And this is why today we're beginning a rather spiritual series. Uh, now that we are back here, um, Bible Talks is back permanently, almost, not permanently, maybe um, whenever we have guests on Bible Talks, we'll use the other studio. But for now, we are using this studio for Bible Talks and Monday, Monday show will be in the other studio just so we can distinguish. You know, sometimes you see a couple of, a couple of videos on our pages and it all looks like it's a Monday show because it's in one studio. So the idea of separating the studios is for you to be able to distinguish that, oh, now he's doing Bible Talks and now he's doing uh, the Monday show. Obviously, we do hope to grow from here because I believe what we have is a global message. This is not a local message that only you must hear with your family, but I believe your neighbors and their neighbors must be able to be privy to such information. So if you've not subscribed yet, I'm urging you to subscribe to the channel uh, that the word can spread. You share, let someone know about this. If you're here for the first time, I know I'm giving you a long introduction, but believe me, you're going to be amazed by the information we'll give here today. Now we're discussing uh, distinguishing the spirit from the physical. Because for many people, what exists is what they can see, something that they are able to see, touch, perceive, uh, smell, taste, is what is within the realm of existence. So if you ask uh, people what is out there in space, if you ask scientists what's out there in space, they might tell you that there is um, a lot of nothing because the, the earth is perceived to be hanging on nothing. But if you looked at it from a spiritual perspective, you may realize that there's infrastructure that is not visible to us, but is visible spiritually. Now I'm speaking this way because I'm trying to get you to distinguish and to understand that Jesus actually said, blessed is he who believes even without seeing, because it is a disadvantage for you to only believe that all that exists is what you can perceive what you can see, what you can touch, taste, hear, smell. There is more than what can be perceived by your senses to existence. And we're going to uh, get deeper into the scriptures to be able to look at this and distinguish spirit from physical. What is spirit and what is physical? What is the difference between these two realms, these two materials? Um, it's very important for you to understand that because everyone that you know and you have known and you will know came from the world of spirits and will one day return to the world of spirits, uh, either by the rapture, by death, or by other means. I don't know what other means. I guess it's only death or the rapture that would be able to take you into the realm or the world of spirits. Now, to begin with, what will be the theme scripture for this series, for most part of the series? Most parts of the series, we will base on, on this portion of scripture. I want to show you a scripture in the book of Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews, which I know to be such a spiritual, su such a deep book. There's been so much debate about who actually wrote the book of Hebrews. We are not going to get into that. But Hebrews chapter 11, uh, which is usually referred to in the Christian community, Christian circles. Let me not use the word community since uh, it has been almost taken over by a certain community. Christian circles would uh, refer to this chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, as the whole of faith. Because uh, this chapter speaks of faith and speaks of the many men and women who conquered through faith. Now verse 1 to 3 of the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Ah, that's a very powerful scripture. My focus is on verse 3. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds, take note of the word worlds. If you can see there, there's actually a, uh, a footer, which is to show you that there's more to the word worlds. So by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Do you get that? The things which are seen, everything you know today, everything you are able to see, be it stones, walls, chairs, whatever it is, people, animals, trees, anything that you can see was not made out of things which are seen. Everything you can see was made of things which are invisible. What this for me shows me is that there's an invisible world, which is the original copy of everything we know and see, the spirit world, and it is the source of the physical world. So the physical world came out of the spirit world, but cannot perceive the spirit world. And that what and what that means is that we may begin to think we are the only ones that are there. All that exists is what is physical. When what is spiritual can see us, interact with us very well. I'll give you this example. You know, man is a three-dimensional being. I'll try to break it down for you, not to get too, techni too technical, but man is a three-dimensional being. Take this cup, for example. You are able to perceive the three different aspects of this cup. That's the length, the breadth, and the height. That's why you can understand uh, how much contents to put in the cup because you can perceive the breadth, the height, and the length. That's how, that's how come we know how tall a table is, how long uh, a building is, how wide something is. We are able to perceive three dimensions as human beings. So we are three-dimensional beings. We perceive height, we perceive length, and we perceive um, breadth or width. That's human beings. But if, for example, we encountered a, a rat, and let's say a rat is a two-dimensional being that only perceives length and breadth, right? It's not able to perceive height. I'm giving an example. That would mean that a, a rat may not necessarily see us because we are tall, we have the height aspect to our bodies. And if a, a rat can't see us on the basis of our height, it means there's a certain perception it will have of us. It can see something, but it can't see the whole thing because it can't see height. It can see length, it can see breadth. So maybe it sees our feet, how long our feet are, and what a rat will think is that we are feet. So uh, it will tell its friends, oh, the other day, uh, the feet were walking and, you know, the rat will really not understand what kind of a creature we are if a rat cannot perceive height. And in the same way, we being three-dimensional beings does not limit the existence of dimensions to three. There's more than just height. There's more than just length. There's more than just width. But we are only able to perceive those. As a matter of fact, Einstein believed that time is a fourth dimension. So let's Take, for example, that we have beings that live, that are four-dimensional. They are able to perceive time. It means for them, time is not just linear. They don't just go forward into the future. But they can see the ends of time because they can measure it. They can see where it starts and where it ends. So they can go into the past, into the future, into the present. They, have, they can use time the way we use length. You understand? And if there are greater dimensions beyond that, what happens then is if I as a human being notice that the rat is sick and that uh, it has liver damage, for example, and I want to operate on it, because I can perceive um, three dimensions, um, which includes depth, width, breadth, it means I can cut a rat open and enter inside. And if a rat did not perceive depth, like I do, then it will not be able to even notice the procedure happening. 
And this is what in our world we refer to as miracles because an angel will come and replace a, a person's heart as we are praying. And because it's happening in a higher dimension than what we can perceive, we say it's a miracle. But miracles don't exist in the heavenly realms because that's normal for them. Miracles exist here where there's limitation. So I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to say. Three-dimensional beings. If a rat is a two-dimensional being, it doesn't perceive height or it doesn't perceive depth. It means we can do a whole operation on the rat and it will be successful. Yet the rat will not have seen the operation take place. Does it mean we are not real? Of course not. We're real. But to understand this makes you understand when the Bible is saying so that the things which are visible were not made of things which can be seen. Because the things which can not be seen to us are visible within their dimensions, within their realms. They have a higher kind of existence that we will revert back to once we leave the earth. So this is something that you must begin to understand, that by faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now let's take note of another word within the same scripture. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. Why worlds? The word worlds there, the, the original um, root word that was used is aeon. Now I want to show it to you from the Amplified Bible because the Amplified Bible actually breaks down what aeon means. Hebrews 11 verse 3 from the Amplified. By faith, that is with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the worlds, the universe, ages, were framed and created, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. So do you, do you see what, what, what the word worlds means there? It has two meanings. The word aeon would mean universe, which means the physical worlds we can see, the planetary bodies were created by the word of God. But the other meaning would also mean the worlds, the ages, the time of Adam, the time before Adam, the time after Adam, which would be the time of Noah, these are ages, they are dispensations because they are times when God put an end to the world or put an end to a covenant or started a covenant. He did something that affects the entire world during these periods that we can split and say this is a new age. So for example, when God creates Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, remember the instruction he gives to them, be fruitful, multiply, Replenish the earth. To replenish means to fill it up again. It was once full, fill it up again. So Adam is an age, the age of Adam, the dispensation of Adam, because something already took place. Notice that Adam found Satan on earth. So something took place before Adam, and after Adam came, God brought a flood, then Noah, the age of Noah. And after Noah came Abraham, because Abraham starts a dispensation. Uh, he starts a promise, a covenant. And this covenant is then established when Moses comes with the law. Oh, because you are uh, Abraham's children, I will teach you my character. And then later on, we have Jesus Christ. And now we have the Holy Spirit, the church age. That's why I'm able to be here to explain to you the scriptures by the Spirit. So the word there worlds is talking about two things by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of god by faith we understand that the dispensations were created by the word of god right framed created by the word of god put in place their structures the skeleton of the ages the skeleton of the worlds was put in place by the word of god so if you had watched some of my earlier teachings. I'll explain it to you again anyway. I did a teaching called God is the source. And this is because sometimes people get to uh, sit down and think, where could, um, could there have been a time when nothing existed? And then at some point, something began to exist, maybe God, and then God began to then create other things. Was there a time when there was just nothing? Um, no, there was never a time when there was nothing because time came out of God. So firstly, time came out of God. Secondly, God is self-existing. It means in God's realm, where God comes from, from his place, 
at God's place or in God's place, things do not need to have a source where they come from. So God is self-existing. Time comes out of him. And it is within time that things have a source. So um, I explained how that God being the source, everything came out of him. Right? But what was the procedure? What were the steps before these things came to be, came out of God? Number one, they started in his thoughts. Remember God says, I know the thoughts I have for you, plans to build you and not to harm you, to give you an expected end. God starts before he takes action in his thoughts. He says, I don't know why you worship these idols whom I did not tell you to worship. Neither did it even come into my mind that you must worship them. So God begins the process in his thought realm. God's thoughts are a world. So the thought realm begins to harbor these things and they are real uh, uh, experiences that are happening in, in God's thought realm. It's a, it's a whole world. God says to Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. Because Jeremiah and God had an understanding before Jeremiah came to earth. Because Jeremiah existed in a certain realm within God. And when Jeremiah came out, he was already ordained to be a prophet. Are you, are you understanding what I'm trying to say, what I'm explaining to you? So you need to then begin to understand that God starts from his thoughts. And then there is, the first world is his thoughts. And the final product is, let's say, the physical world, right? But the intermediary, the middle ground is the word of God, the transport system. What transports a whole world from God's mind into a realm that can be seen, his word. He speaks, and that word carries such potency to be able to produce. So all things came from God. God is the source of all things, but they start in his mind. They're transported by his words into a realm that can be seen. That's why the Bible says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So God thought about everything. The Bible in the book of uh, Psalms actually says, where can I go from your presence? Uh, where can I go? Um, even if I go to hell, you are there. Even if I go to heaven, you are there. And then it goes on to say you have, uh, I believe that should be the same chapter. It goes on to say you, you have known me, O Lord, uh, in detail, in extreme detail. And it says you have written all my days in your book. So God thought about each and every one of our days before the world began. He knew us all intimately. He had understood each and every one of our days intimately. Now you may wonder why have, may have our, our lives turned out differently from the way God thought them out. It's because of what the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 says. It talks about that you may know the perfect, the good and acceptable will of God. God's will is perfect. He has a perfect will, his perfect design for your life, what he wrote in his book. But then your compromise and your will begin to take you into what is known as God's good will, God's acceptable or permissible will, the things that he has to permit because they are your will and you're in earth where you have dominion. You understand? So now in order to begin to understand how the world's framed, how the worlds were framed by the word of God, let me show you 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. It says, yet for us, there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Do you see that? I like the versions that say, unto us there is one God, from whom all things came. So everything came from God through Christ, and they are all for God. So every single thing came out of God. You may be wondering, how could things have come out from God? Of course, I explained to you by his word. But can you imagine that God is able to extract anything out of anything to the extent that when Adam went around looking for a suitable partner, God was able to extract that suitable partner. After having created the whole world with animals, trees, and everything, God was still able to get into Adam and extract a partner out of him. Imagine if God sat with all of us individually today, what would he be able to remove from us? 
you would be shocked. He would tell you your liver can actually produce three people. So if God is able to extract a whole person from outside, from inside of Adam and the whole world, her name is Eve because she's the mother of all living. Out of Eve comes a whole world, earth, right? Now imagine what could come out of God. That's why everything came out of God. You don't need to wonder the methods through which they came out of God because God is, he's mind blowing. <laughs> what you need to understand is everything came out from, from God. John chapter four, verse 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now I take you to the scripture because I, I obviously want you to see that God is a spirit. Now, if God is a spirit, how will Dan, Bahatram, or you over there, wherever you're watching from, come out of a spirit God? How will you, a physical being, come out of a spirit God? Also, you came out from your father and mother. How then did you come out from God? Also, how will a physical world come out from God? I mean, how, how can you explain it? Firstly, this shows me God's size, that God is really big if everything came out of him. Secondly, how did you come out of God when you came out from your mother? It's because God never ever had to form man from the dust again after he formed Adam. And God never had to breathe the breath of life into anyone else after Adam. Because when God created Adam, he put in him all the ability to multiply every aspect of himself. So the original copy of what we are today came out from God. And within that, he put the ability to multiply. An ability he did not put in angels. An ability he did not put in everything. But he gave this mandate to us to be able to multiply after our own kind. Now, we don't just multiply bodies. We multiply souls, spirits. We have the ability to multiply, reproduce spirits thinking individuals with a will, a mind, emotions, autonomous individuals. A person that did not exist before can suddenly exist because you made them, because God put that ability within you. Now, God being spirit, how did physical worlds come out from God so that the things which are seen were not made from things which are visible? If you have that question, that's a good question. The kingdom of God permits for questions. God is a teaching God. The Bible says, talks of the millennial time when Jesus Christ will rule the earth. And it talks about the children in that age and says God will be their teacher. God loves to teach. He's a speaking God. If you have read the scriptures, then you will know that God is a speaking God. To the extent that in a period where God is silent, they had to write a whole book called Lamentations because it was so peculiar that God would be silent. Now, God being spirit, I would like you to imagine it this way. Imagine that God in the beginning, what we will call the beginning is the beginning of time, when time came out from God, when days came out from God, right? Um, imagine that God had a physical body. Now, God is really, really, really big. The Bible says heaven is his throne, which means God is sitting on heaven. If God was to get up and go home, that wouldn't be heaven because he's simply sitting on heaven. And the Bible then says, earth is his footstool, which would be to show you God's size and distance. Now, of course, that is not in a literal sense that God's uh, feet are the size of earth because also we have planets bigger than the earth. Then that would mean God is not the biggest. You get it. It's talking about dimensions of God, that when you get to earth, all you have experienced is the dimension of God's feet, that you have to elevate so much to get to God's face. The Bible says Jesus went above all heavens, <laughs> that he might feel all things. God is above all heavens. Now, if God is so big, I want you to imagine that God had a physical body and God decides to shed off this body and store it in physical worlds, in planetary bodies, in stars. 
that the physical components became the physical hosts of heaven because all things came from God. And then God remains unseen to the physical aspects that came out of him. All those physical aspects that came out of him can no longer perceive him because now God is spirit. But God goes on then to create spirit worlds out of his spiritual nature that now can interact with him. That's why Gabriel can uh, appear to Zechariah and say to him, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God because Gabriel is a spirit being. So God is a spirit. And yes, when we die, we return to the world of spirits. The Bible does tell us that, that when a man dies, his body returns to the dust from where it came but his spirit returns to God from where it came because the spiritual aspect of a man came from God. Now in our next teaching, obviously we're going to look at the spiritual makeup or the makeup of a man, spirit, soul, body. I've done this before, but I want to do it in more detail now. Uh, also hoping that we'll at this time reach more people, but you need to understand that, that the spiritual aspect of man came from God. Of course, this, the physical aspect of man came from God because the earth originally came from God. But you, you, you understand, I hope you're following what I'm trying to say. Now, God is a spirit and the unseen begins to create the seen. So I'm distinguishing for you here spirit and physical. Jesus then goes on to say something very strange. In the book of John, John chapter 6, verse 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Now, it's interesting to me that Jesus would say the words I speak to you are spirit, knowing very well that it is his words that framed the worlds. And when we talk about the word framing the worlds, the word framing the worlds, we are talking about not only physical worlds, but even spiritual worlds, that God framed all worlds, that nothing was made without Christ, that everything that is had to be made through Christ, right? That's why Jesus here says it's the spirit that gives life because the material, the texture, the, the tapestry, uh, the fabric of what we call the word of God is spirit, the material of God, th what makes up God. That's why the Bible in the book of Philippians says, Jesus having possessed the very qualities that make God, God, because they are made of the same material. You see, the fish is made of water. The birds are made of water. The trees are made of earth. Human beings are made of earth and spirit. God is spirit, the original, right? His word is spirit. That is the material that makes God. Now this same material, the word of God was personified, Jesus Christ. And this is the material that created the universe. That's why the Bible says he went above all heavens, Ephesians chapter four, I believe verse uh, 11, 12, uh, verse 11, I believe. He went above all heavens that he might feel all things because he is the one who is in all these things. Very interesting, don't you think? If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share. I hope this is getting into your spirit and you are beginning to understand these things. Uh, I want to read you the, the last scripture today. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. I'll read it from the New King James. For thus saith the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in high and holy place. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Now you can see here, God is saying he's high and lofty. I told you that God is above all heavens. He's also saying, I am the one who inhabits eternity because God does not live inside time. But interestingly, he also talks about how he is with the contrite and the broken in spirit, right? Yet the Bible is saying that he is in a high and lofty place, that he's in a high and holy place. He dwells in a high and lofty place, a higher, 
He dwells in a high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. Why? Because God is dwelling in the spirit. So, without getting too deep into this, there is a connection between what is inside you and what is above all things. There is a way to be transported into God's location through the inside. You can get inside and be transported into God's location. Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. So God is dwelling in the eternal part of you. And this is where I want to start next week when I begin to talk about the makeup of man. I've distinguished spirit from flesh, from physical, that the spirit made the physical. The physical is what we can interact with. But inside the physical, the spirit dwells inside. The spirit dwells inside the physical. The body is a covering. The physical is a covering for the spirit. And God is now inside the spirit which dwells in the physical. So the physical is the home for the spirit and the spirit is the home for God. So God dwells in all spirits. And he refers to that as a high and holy place. Oh, glory to God. I hope you are getting this. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're getting this. Please, if you do have any questions, leave, in the, leave them in the comment section. I'll be glad to look at them and respond in our next uh, teachings. So. Yes, it's important for every believer to understand that God is a spirit, that there is a spirit world out there, that there is more uh, that is out there than what we can see, that existence is not only what we are able to perceive. As a matter of fact, we are told that we walk by faith and not by sight or by sensory perception. I'm so glad to have been here. I have come to the end of this part one of the series. And I'll sure, be, I'll sure to be here with you next week, Friday. Again, 22 hours Central African time. Make a date with me. So glad, so glad, so glad, so glad, so glad. I am so glad to have been here. Um, if the Lord had not loved you, he would not have sent me. Please do subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share. Now, see you in the next one. God bless.